Welcome back and thank you very much indeed. The Daily Graphic says, President nominates three females for Supreme Court. We are committed to paying past credits. Nit Kukubot signed $600 million uh, agreement with AFDB. That's the stimulus package which the Kukubot boss spoke about uh, after the cabinet meeting at Pediasi. 2020 budget today will reform tax structure and vote no in referendum. That's what the NDC told us yesterday. Daily Guide, three judges nominated for Supreme Court. of for loses again. China writes off Ghana's debt and NDC pushes for no vote in uh, DC election. Today is also budget day and 27 e-blocks completed since 2017. The Daily Statement, Coco Board grabs $600 million uh, from AFDB and Credit Suisse Group. $14 million saved on Tibet um, upgrade project. And Bormia says funds to upgrade technical universities and institutes are ready. Uh, would, would know in the coming days. Sedinam pocketed Maslock payments, repayments, alleges state attorney. The Finder newspaper, 51% not aware of December 17 referendum. 2020 budget to focus on economic transformation and referendum. NDC's no vote call contradicts its MPs. Government to develop labor migration policy minister. The BNFT budget 2020 when promises clash with fiscal discipline uh, amid significant revenue for Esla robust recovery plan returns VRA to growth part. V launches GMRA and GIFM uh, guidelines and the the Ghanaian Times. Most Ghanaians unaware of 17 December referendum survey. Coco Board bags 600 million facility from AFDB and 2020 budget to focus on macroeconomic stability, job creation, infrastructure development, banking sector cleanup. Government fully supports Bank of Ghana SEC, according to the vice president. And finally, the publisher says appear to celebrate 200 hits in 20 years and more vile propaganda against Onma MCE fails, madman attacks police, and Akufuado appoints three to Supreme Court. Gunmen kill two kids in Kintampo. My guest this morning is the Honorable Felix of Kwachofusu. He is a, a former Deputy Minister of Communication and also the NDC's parliamentary candidate for the Abra Asebu Kwamankesi constituency. And also Kamal Dane Abdullahi is a Deputy National Communications Director of the NPP. Gentlemen, welcome. How are you doing? Well, thank you. Felix, today is Budget Day. What's on your mind? What do you expect? Well, um... To be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not holding out hope. Really? For any significant shift from the way that this government has handled the management of the economy. Um, you would recall that they couched all manner of names <laughs> for the three previous budgets that they've read. There was the Asempa budget. Okay. And all manner of names. There was the budget as absolutely, well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. None of that materialized. Uh, but to analyze the budget, it is important to relate it to what commitments the MPP made. It didn't, it didn't when materialize NAPCO. Well, I'm, I'm going to show, I'm going to show you NAPCO and I mean. all of that. Don't worry, I'll show Plans you. I'll show you, I'll show you precisely jobs. what I mean. What I mean is that to, to be able to do a, a comprehensive analysis of what we have been offered in the intervening period, there's a need to relate it okay. to what was promised. If you look into the MPP manifesto, they set about four main objectives regarding the management of the economy. Okay. They said that they were going to grow the economy in double digits okay. over the four years that they'll be in power. Mm. That means that we're going to grow at over 10%. Yeah. That's what double digits mean. They said that they were going to lower taxes and not impose additional taxes. Right. They said they were going to reduce government borrowing mm. and then they were going to lower the cost of doing business. Now, none of these four main objectives have been achieved. They have not achieved the 10% and above growth that they promised. In fact, because of an 80.1% increase in oil production in 2017, <laughs> arising out of investments made mm. by the NDC before we left power, mm. growth hovered around 8.1% in 2017. That is not 10%. Right. So it fell short of the promise that they made. Mm. Now, this growth slumped to 6.3% in 2018. Mm -hmm. This year, we expect them to do about 6.5% percent mm. which is still far off the 10 percent target 
Okay. Next year, we don't expect that they will go beyond 7%. So right there, you see that they have been unable to accomplish what they said they would do. Now let us come to taxes. They claim that uh, we were taxing Ghanaians too much. Indeed, I recall the famous claim of uh, now Vice President Baumia that we had reduced governance to borrowing and taxation. Mm -hmm. They also claim that if governance was just about borrowing and taxing, their 18 year old sons could run the country better. Mm -hmm. But what has been the case since they've been in power? They have introduced a gamut of taxes mm -hmm. which have combined to impose hardships on ordinary Ghanaians and Ghanaian families and businesses. Among these are the 5% increase in VAT, which they disguised mm -hmm. as a separation of the NHIL and Get Fund levies from the VAT as we used to know it. The cumulative effect is that it has led to a 5% increase in VAT, and this has affected businesses. I'll come to what it has done to business when I speak about lowering the cost of business. Before the 5% increase in VAT, mm -hmm. there was a 3% VAT flat rate, which the Kumasi Business Association lamented bitterly over a number of years. In addition to that, and until very recently, when President Mama said that he was going to abolish it in the event that he became president, mm -hmm. there was a luxury car tax, right. which meant that anybody who had a car with engine capacity above 3,000 cc was going to pay or paid between 1,000 cities and 2,000 Ghana cities annually. But it's been abolished. Yes, but the, the, it did tremendous damage to, to, to individuals who own cars, especially those who sold uh, cars. In addition to this, in the media review, media budget review, which was done sometime in July, right. I believe, the finance minister announced an, a 27% increase in ESLA. Mm. It meant that for every gallon or liter of food that you buy, you paid up to one Ghana CD in levy. Again, in addition to this, they increased the communication service tax mm. from 6% to 9%, and that means that it had been increased by 50%. 50 right. In addition to this, you recall their stance on fuel prices. Mm. They said that they were not going to uh, increase fuel prices. They called the NDC government insensitive whenever there was an increase in fuel prices. Since they've been in power, fuel prices have gone up on 24 different occasions. It has resulted in a situation where a gallon of fuel, which sold for 16 Ghana cities, now sells at almost 25 Ghana cities. Again, you recall their stance on utility tariffs. Mm. How President Akufuado promised, indeed, there was an occasion where he demanded an immediate reduction in tariffs. Mm. He said that tariffs in Ghana should be fixed such that they are the same as tariffs in Cote d'Ivoire. And you recall that they used to make a lot of comparison between Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire. But what is the situation? About a month or two ago, if I'm not mistaken, tariffs went up on two different occasions, 11% once and 5% once. So when you put all of these together, it also means that the second pillar of their promise, mm. that is to lower taxes, has not been fulfilled. In fact, even though they announced some reduction in uh, import duties. The benchmark values. Yeah, but they, they introduce the benchmark values anyway. But import duties, <laughs> import duties as I speak to you, are still much higher than they were when the NDC But the benchmark power. values are there to mitigate those effects. It doesn't matter what they are there it to do. It does matter. Their position, no? Within the context of what they promised, it does not matter because they said they were going to lower it. As I speak to you, mm. it is much higher than it used to be really? under the NDC. Even about the now, nation? yes, absolutely. It is much higher. <laughs> you can speak to importers, and importers continue to lament this. But you see, the totality of that is that it has imposed severe hardships on Ghanaians, and that is why Ghanaians continue to complain. Now, the third plank of their promise, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to the MPP manifesto, I've not said anything outside of what they promised. Right. They said that. We had reduced governance to borrowing. Dr. Bamiya was shouting from the rafters. President Kufaru was shouting from the rafters. Um, they said that, oh, uh, taxation and borrowing were a problem. You recall their famous cliche mm -hmm. from uh, taxation to production. Since they've been in power, it's been taxing, more taxing, and even more taxing. That's what they've been doing. Again, when you come to borrowing, at the time that we were leaving office, 31st December 2016, that's the end of the fiscal year, right. our total public debt stood at 120 billion Ghana cities. They said it was too much. As of July this year, and July would mean that we were in the third quarter, third quarter right. of the year. Third quarter of the year. As of that time, our debt had ballooned from 120 billion Ghana cities to 204 billion Ghana cities, which is an increase of 84 billion Ghana cities. We suspect that by the close of this fiscal year, it will go to 90 billion Ghana cities. Have you lost hope? No. Now, the most worrying thing about this sort of debt build-up, mm. apart from the fact that it is creating 
some constraint for us. Because of this, this year alone, we are paying 18.9 billion Ghana cities in interest payments alone. Interest payments, not even the payment of the principal or amortization of the loan. Now, despite this heavy borrowing, which is contrary to the position that they took in opposition, mm. which is also a representative of a failure to meet a cardinal principle, a cardinal promise in their manifesto, mm. they are unable to show any significant capital investments, unlike us, who borrowed a total of our 87 billion in our eight year tenure. And are able to produce, are, are able to show mm. that we engaged in the largest capital investment ever in the history of the Fourth Republic. Despite this heavy borrowing by the Akufuado government, they are unable to show it. The last one that okay. I want to touch Wrap on, up for me. So, the last so one that I want to touch can, on can take a is their claim about reducing the cost of doing business. Okay. You recall that I referred you earlier right. to the complaints of the Kumasi the, business. The effects of the increase. Increments. Absolutely. Now, the effect of the 5% VAT increase was that all manufacturing companies also passed on the cost uh, increase onto consumers. Indeed, there's a famous letter of August 2018 in, to address to the finance minister in which the Association of Ghana Industries actually said that that VAT increase had led to a 5% increase in their cost of production. And because they could not absorb it, they were going to pass it on to the consumer. That is you and I. So right. every commodity on the market went up. <coughs> you okay. recall also that the, uh, thank you. the Chamber of uh, Telecom Felix, thank also you. announced a 5% increase thank you. in let, let, their time. Let, so uh, all of these show that they have not been able to keep their so, promises. So for you, as you, far have, as you, the you have no sense of hope. When we come back, I will show you why my hope is further dimmed. Okay. Even the mm -hmm. things that they promised in the budgets mm -hmm. over the last three years have not been accomplished. Kamal, I'm sure you have hope. You are looking on the brighter side. Well, well, well. Good morning to you Good once morning, again. my brother. Good morning to Felix. Hello. Um, I think after his election, I never saw him. So let me congratulate him on winning the <laughs> primaries. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, sure. he's not going to get a seat. In a oh, how oh, do you know that? How do you know that? You know, that you know, so yeah. How do you know that? That you know. Is he? Hughes. Good morning to the viewers out there. Mm. Good news for us today. The constitution has mandated and the laws of Ghana has mandated the president mm. through his finance minister to present a physical policy to parliament okay. for debate and for approval for us to look at how, of course, our economy will continue growing. Mm. Felix has spoken. Started off with the point that he's not got even hope at all right his hope is deemed and, and, and will continue was, to be was deemed. because he says what you promised you haven't been able to fulfill palpable falsehood and i'll tell you why explain to me when you take the asempa budget as we presented we made a solemn promise to the people of ghana that we're going to ensure that the macroeconomic stability of this country the microeconomic stability of this country, that the indicators that we have come to pick up from the, the, the incompetence of the NDC, the ineptness of the NDC, what we saw, that of course, at the point where we didn't even have credibility and that we needed to go to IMF for policy credibility and come back. When we picked this country from that angle, we promised them that, look, we're going to ensure that irrespective of the fact that we've been taken to IMF, Irrespective of the fact that we have nose dive in terms of our indicators, our economy not looking good, we are committed to prudently managing this economy and will take this economy to a different height. Have you done Lo that? and behold, have yes, lo and behold, in the words of Felix, that the attainment of the GDP growth or real GDP growth that we got had to do with fuel. Oil. Or oil, mm. as it were, sorry. Had to do with oil production. That day the NDC had increased. Interesting. In one vein, so they were contesting well, your no, 6.7 no, no, no. You GDP. Very, let, let, just listen to me. Let me flow. Well, mm. in one vein, they tell you that look, the attainment of such a success is as a result of the work of the NDC, that they had made sure that some oil blocks were actually discovered and added to what we had. Hence, helping grow our economy. Mm. But they have forgotten that in 2011, when they were all out touting that they had gotten what double digits growth, mm. which was the 14 percent in 2011 under um, at the Professor Mills. Okay, mm. they had forgotten that the very, 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 very factor that got it growing to that level was oil. And who founded the oil in the first place? Who worked hard to get the oil for us in the first place? The MPP. And they were all out telling it was a jungle. Today, it is good to tell us that oil has seen our economy growing. Felix, it's good. 
One that comes is NDC that got some oil blocks. But the very person who worked for the exploration to start, for us to even have oil, and we call an oil nation, that person should not be credited. Ghanaians are watching us. The MPP is committed to ensuring that we will do the best. He said, now let's move he, on. He says, look, you have increased let's taxes. Contrary to we what you promise, said, you were we going promise to do. in our first budget mm. that every single child in this country who is after, who is finished with JHS mm. and is supposed to go to the S senior, uh, senior high school, mm. who has no money, the parents have no money, no one has it. In the Asempa budget, which he alluded to, we said we're committed to making sure that we get money to do this. Free SHG. They had told us that we cannot get money anywhere and that our flag bearer then should come up with numbers how we're going to fund this. Proving them wrong, we have found money to do this, and that child has had smile on his face or on her face. The, the parents are happy. They're smiling that the economy has been able to take care of it. You know how much money we're spending on that? Billions of Ghana cities to ensure that the child is educated. To the extent that their own flag bearer recently went to Cape Coast, John Damani Mahama, and said that we're spending so much on SSS. Why do you have to put so much money to develop, I mean, to educate com people? Comparable but, to how much we had borrowed... How much? What's the fraction? My brother, of my brother, I'll come to the borrower. He made he he made several points, okay. and I'm coming. So I'm you're, you're taking about I'm taking another. Okay. And I'm telling you that in, in, within the assembly, but the promise we made to people, the physical promise we made, and got the approval, we have fulfilled it, and that flagship policy is running, and no one is complaining about school Free today. SHS. Now, two, we talked about a Greek. When we came in, they had completely put in in, in shattered, as it were, the mm. agric sector. They had completely damaged it. Mm. Look at the growth of agriculture. What was the major policy for agriculture? Today, as I speak to you, farmers are happy. Go okay. to the northern part of Ghana, where peasant farmers had access to fertilizer through the planting for food and jobs. This was inculcated in our budget, mm. in the Asempa and Ejuma budget that we had. Okay, move on. And I'm saying that these are the success stories that we've had. Farmers are able to tell us that, look, at the end of the day, we are fine. On health, mm. what did we do? We said to the Ghanaian populace that, look, mm. in the first place, no one should suffer because I don't have money to go to the hospital. Mm. Again, credit goes to the MPP. That killer policy of, you know, cash and carry. We told Ghanaians when we come, we are pathetic, I mean, we are sympathetic to them, mm. and that we are going to make sure that we are sensitive to their plight, and that anyone will be able to access health. And by 2003, we promised it, and then it happened under the MPP. Growing it, we left it for them in 2008. You know where they left health insurance? Look at the debt there. Do they go and find out how much money the budgets that we have made have catered for the debts that they have Let's paid. talk about the they taxes. Have, they, they have, they, they, they came Let, out Let's with. talk about the now, taxes. Now, 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 oh, you see, you see, I'm just coming. I'm, I've, I've, I've listened you, everything. You've listed So that, on health. But you say, we, yeah, we don't, we don't able, have all, all time. I beg we you. We don't have all time. We don't have all time. Barely you, listen. Yes. On health, we have been able to ensure that whoever is a subscriber to health insurance is able to access health. And of course, we are able to make sure that we pay for the premium and the claims that, as, that comes in. Government has paid close to over $1.2 billion, and this is a fact. And facts are what we use to you know, damage propaganda. Now, we talk about taxes. Right. A simple budget and then a Juma budget. He says we have come, we promise production-based economy and not tax economy. Right. And that we call them lazy. Indeed, did you? True to our West, when we came, did we scrap nuisance taxes up to 11 or not? 11 nuisance taxes were scrapped. You called Under Esla, them, you the, called the Esla nuisance, nuisance tax. I'm saying that 11 tax. taxes were scrapped. We, um, energy tax sector levy was reduced to a level, mm -hmm. and then we move on. But you did called we, it a nuisance no? tax. The question is so simple. The man says we promised tax, tax reduction of taxes, okay. and we came in only to implement what? To introduce new to taxes. Introduce taxes. Hence, right. we have not mm -hmm. held ourselves to our promise. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that is not true because the first two budgets that we had read, those budgets saw us reducing taxes, close, I mean, even scrapping taxes, 11 of them. But, but I'm saying, and I'm submitting again, to you that while in opposition, your flag bearer and the vice president called ESLA a nuisance tax. Why are we still maintaining it if we? saw it as nuisance tax yeah they, 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 you see they, they, there's always a revision of stance and 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 of course esla we looked at it and we said that look this was a burden on us <clears throat> yes we had spoken about it when we came in we made a move and reduced it from okay. where it was to a level okay. and then of course other taxes that or levies that we saw that were not actually too necessary and that they were imposing burden on us which was coming from them okay. we had made sure we scrapped them and i said about 11 of them i mean because there's no time i cannot <coughs> go through up now he talked about that taxes and i'm saying look we have done well right 
to the extent that he even got to the port to tell us the whole world listen to your logic mm. felix tells the whole world that there has been a reduction in import duties right i listened to him yeah and that we have even brought benchmark and we have reduced benchmark yeah, and that it was even we who brought it so we don't even deserve credit then in the next time i mean the next moment he tells us that look even though there has been reduction but it is still higher than what ndc time they used to pay he called that, importers. He said the importers are Listen, complaining the man tells you there's reduction yeah the same man is telling that even though there is reduction but they're still paying higher so which is which what's the logic i don't get it you don't get well, it. you are telling me that there has been reduction mm. and that is emphatic a statement you have made and then we bought the benchmark value, we have reduced them. Mm. And that, of course, if somebody is supposed to have been paying 10,000 cities, maybe as a result of this reduction, mm. it will come down a bit because there's a reduction. Right. Then you tell me, no, even though there's reduction, but they are still paying higher. What is causing the payment of higher? I don't get it. He has to explain he to has us. To explain. But I'm telling you yeah, that sure the Ghanaians who are watching us know very well that, look, we are out there to speak the truth to the Ghanaians people. We are out there to tell them where the state of the economy is today. I am expecting the finance minister today to tell us all the indicators that we have that points to the fact that we have a resilient economy. Today, as we speak, mm -hmm. of course, not too long ago, the 83 point so percent that we got, which was the first, um, the, the best in the world, mm -hmm. and now it's moving to about 7.6 growth, as it were, because of certain factors. As, uh, it doesn't mean that our economy is down. Where did we take it from? We took it three point something talk, from talk them. Talk about the, and the, I'm saying, the, the VAT, NHIL, 5% why, overboard. Why? You just sat here. Before I came in, rate. before I came in, before we came in to sit here, mm -hmm. you were admonishing Ghanaians to pay their taxes. Yes. You were admonishing them to pay so that they can get development. I was talking you to, were the, saying, to the no? uh, informal sector. To pay. They are Ghanaians. I didn't know Ghanaians. They informed us that Addis Togolese. Yeah. You're saying you're admonishing them to pay. You're telling them at the end of the day that without taxes, without revenue mobilization, we are unable to grow as an economy Absolutely. or as a government. Absolutely. This but is a somebody fact. And there's no government. No, and there's no government. The money. And there is no government that would come in and say, look, for me, revenue mobilization, I am going to throw it away and put it somewhere else. Setepe, why did they have problems with Setepe? They had problems with him because all manner of taxes were coming in and that they were, it was making them unpopular. And they were all out. Shouting. Mm. on their rooftops and i'm telling you at the end of the day we came in and looked at all those things those new zealand taxes imposed by Tosebi, to the extent the condoms were taxed in this country you're aware of that mm. to the extent the condoms were taxed in this country today they are telling me they are the alternative they are the best we should look at them then he ends up by not even giving you where we are today as figures do we, where is do inflation we, do we... where where is the micro stability strength mm. what is the, the strength of the economy in terms of micro he has not told anybody. You, 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 and I am telling you, the indicators that we do have today, apart from maybe the Forex market, mm. which of course has its own challenges, apart from the Forex market, which has its own challenges, I am telling you that we have performed far better. No wonder you, you could you not promise a two-digit growth. You promised a two-digit growth beyond 10%. Yes, we did. I, am not, I will not run away from that. Have fact. we achieved that? Why? When, when you go into a manifesto, even budgets, as is going to be presented today, Okay. remains proposal until it's approved by parliament. Mm -hmm. Is that not correct? True. Our wish was to take the economy from where they left it, which was so bad, and he knows that, okay. which was so bad, mm -hmm. was to take that economy and then work with it, grow it. Mm -hmm. Fact. Have we grown the economy or not? Fact, we have grown it. Is it where it is still, uh, it, it was? Is it still where it was? No, that's not a fact. We have moved it from where it is. For better, yes. So if you tell me just the fact that we have written in our manifesto, okay, under the strength, uh, strengthening of the economy, that we needed to move from taxation to production and therefore we're targeting a double growth, when we are not even done with our time, you tell me that, hey, the people have failed. Is it your opinion, so, is it your opinion that the Ghanaian mm. man out there, woman out there, is feeling these uh, indicators, these indicators that they talk about, in his pocket. Yes. Is it pocket friendly? Yes, I'll tell you. your opinion? When, when, when Felix's sister is done with JHS and he's supposed to go to senior, senior high and then Felix is supposed to save that thousand oh, you Ghana. Know his wait sister. a minute, wait a minute. I'm just giving you, know you an example. Sister. Please, I'm building hypothesis. Okay. Look at me. And then, he, of course, he get, at the end of the day, he saves his thousand Ghana and allows this child to go to school. Okay. He has benefited. Right. When that woman who is watching me in the market today is able not to pay fees and let the child go to school, he has benefited. Napco, they tell us we didn't create jobs. Ejuma Bakhet created jobs. Mm. You mentioned Napco to him. Right. And I'm happy. Apart from YEA, which is also a product of MPP. Okay? YEA. 
It used to be youth national youth employment program. Then it moved. They moved it to YEA. Mm. It is also a thinking of the MPP. All the policies, pro pro policies, pragmatic policies that, of course, has brought cushioning to the people of Ghana emanates from the MPP. And I'm proud to say this. Okay. And of course, you ask me whether the person is feels it Feeling in his it, pocket. Right. Yes, the Napco man who is getting that 700 Ghana cities. Okay. After being trained in addition mm. to give him value or to add value to him, that person is, of course, um, happy. Okay. And I'm telling you that I'm feeling it in my pocket. Okay. The man who sits there and sees constructions going on in his area mm. and sees that the bauxite that we have in this country is not given to someone's brother, but is rather given to Ghanaians by the President of the Republic of Ghana through Sino Hydro, which they had told us that they were doubting Thomas's and that no money will even come from China. Today we have heard how much has come, the first tranche, and we are preparing to go back to Parliament for the second phase to happen. This is a government that is focused and moving towards what we are doing. Okay. So I expect better better, better positioning of our physical policy mm. that is going to be presented in Parliament today mm. by Ken Ofurata. Without a doubt, I am saying let's not be perturbed. Ghanaians, if you are watching me, just know that this government is focused and we have moved from better, okay. I mean from, from, from good to better and we are moving to the best. Okay, inshallah. Fele, step in for me. He, right. Kamal says you you only pointed out problems. You didn't tell us where we were at this time. Well, I only pointed out So, where are we Johnny, and what, where are we Johnny, going? I only pointed out the glaring disparity between their own promises and their deliverables. Mm -hmm. That is all I did. I the fact that they promised. <laughs> Times have see, changed. Look, things have changed. Johnny, you are seeing when, you make, when you make a campaign promise mm. and you fail to fulfill it, in political terms, in governance terms, it is a cardinal sin. It is not forgivable. Mm. Oh. So you cannot make excuses for that. You understand me? When you promise to give me A in a manifesto, and I vote for you based on that. And you come to power and you don't deliver it. It is a cardinal okay. for which you get punished. So no excuses are tolerable. Again, he says that when they made the promise, they okay. didn't know how dire the situation was. Mm. And therefore, having come to meet a dire situation, they are unable to fulfill it. And so they are doing what they can. I mean, I'm only paraphrasing what he said. Uh, uh, but the point is that Johnny, the situation that you created that's Johnny, the, the point is that at the time that we were making those promises they were fully aware of the state of the economy right. as i sit with you here there's nothing about the ghanaian economy that we do not know because of the reporting systems the bank of ghana on a mm. quarterly basis every mm. three months mm. they publish what they call the monetary policy committee that's report. right mm -hmm. when you go to the ministry of finance website mm. they have what they call government's fiscal tables so you see everything right. their budget statements year on year provides detailed information detailed, right. when you go to the appendices of the budget it tells you everything that is happening in the ghanaian economy mm. so there is no excuse to be made and we therefore cannot accept the claim that they didn't know what they were heading into they were fully aware of the situation and they said they were going to have specific prescriptions having come into power those prescriptions have not materialized instead of the economic salvation we are on the brink of an economic disaster. Really? <laughs> yes, absolutely. You see, Johnny, and you do this Vox Pop thing every morning yes, where you yes. go to town and you speak to Daily people. Daily yeah. Speak to people about their economic conditions, how they feel, oh. how they are surviving, how times are hard, Kamal and whether or not, it. look, they are not feeling it. He said <laughs> they are feeling it. Absolutely. But the cost of living has gone up so high that people are struggling to make ends meet. Now, I'm glad that he was not able to dispute the fact that the growth in the economy, which is below what they promised anyway, Mm -hmm. was down to the work of the NDC. Except that he says that something similar happened and under NDC. President Mills. That is true. But you see, when we had oil, basically one oil field with a maximum potential of 120,000 barrels of oil a day, mm -hmm. we grew the economy to 14.4%, which is the highest ever in the history of Ghana. Indeed, mm -hmm. indeed. The year before that, 2010, we grew by 8%. Mm -hmm. In 2012, we grew by 9.2%. Mm -hmm. So, even the macroeconomic indices that they tout, their highest growth of 8.1%, comes nowhere near what we did when we, were, when we had oil. But as I speak to you, they have three oil fields. They produce close to 200,000 barrels of oil a day. They receive an average of 4 billion Ghana cities every year from oil revenue. In fact, by the end of this year, all things being equal, that is if things don't change significantly, mm -hmm. they would have received 13 billion Ghana cities in oil revenue alone. Tax revenue alone is in excess of 100 billion Ghana cities. I have not spoken to you about receipts from cocoa, mm. gold, and mm. other exports. Mm. So they have had substantial resources for which reason they should have performed far better than they have done. But because of mismanagement, because of incompetence, mm. they are not able to do beyond 
what they have done. Are you, Again, are you considering the fact that the government has not been able to, GRA, for example, has not been able to meet their uh, that yes, tax Yes, there's targets. a shortfall of there's a shortfall of five billion Ghana cities. But yeah. you see, that arises out of certain over ambitious targets. <laughs> you recall that when they set the targets, Honorable Atu Fosin and those of the minority stock cautioned mm. that the targets were ambitious. Mm. And if you don't have the capacity to collect that much tax revenue, you don't set the target. So that at the end of the day, you come and tell me that there's a shortfall. In any event, despite the shortfall, they still have earned far more mm. than we earned as a government. Look, in eight years of the NDC, we got a total of 248 billion Ghana cities. In just three years, they've gotten over 200 billion Ghana cities. And yet, there's no commensurate capital investment to show for it. Now, let me come to agriculture. He speaks about some major intervention in agri. First of all, it is not the first time that fertilizer is being distributed to farmers. In fact, we distributed over 600 metric tons of fertilizer in that eight-year mm. period under the NDC. We, we, actually, we actually gave it to the farmers for free. They are selling it at half, at half price to farmers, cocoa farmers. They will tell you. They are selling they, it. They, why, they are why you see, a subsidy. They, no, Felix. they are putting a subsidy. But we were giving it to cocoa farmers for free. Felix. You understand? Again, planting for foods and jobs, which he makes some claims about. What's 745,000 jobs. Again, I dispute that. There's no basis for that claim. Look, <laughs> you see, again, let us, let us speak to facts. Mm. The entity that collates employment figures in this country is a Ghana statistical service. True. Their very latest report shows that the total number of unemployed people in Ghana is 1.2 million. If the MPP government employs 700,000 or 750,000 people, it will make such a huge dent mm -hmm. in that statistic that people's livelihoods will so improve that it will have a rippling effect throughout the economy. So that figure cannot be true. What they have done is that they go to people's farms, people who are already engaged in farming. Mm -hmm. So they count. Maybe Kamadi has a maize farm that <laughs> has about three mm -hmm. hands okay. assisting him. Right. Mm -hmm. So they just count and they give them some inputs. And when they give them the inputs, they say that they've created three or four jobs. That is not correct. And it is not, it is not backed by government, official government statistics. Mm -hmm. Now, but I was going to make the point that even mm -hmm. that planting for food and jobs that they make noise about was the outcome of work done by the NDC. You see, before we left power, we had applied to the Canadian government mm -hmm. for a grant of 125 million Canadian dollars. Okay. That grant was supposed to be invested in a program we called MEPO under the agri sector. But, mm -hmm. you know, elections were held in Canada in 2015. Mm -hmm. So the change of government stalled the access to the grant right. and, and we also left power in 2016. So when they came to power, that grant had just come in. So they just changed the name of the program from MAPO to planting for foods and jobs. <laughs> that is what they so used to finance. Uh, no, no, it's not in this. I'm telling you, <laughs> you see, I've, I've given you specifics. You understand me? Mm -hmm. And he knows that what I'm saying is true. Mm -hmm. Again, regarding free SSL, look, it is okay to pay the fees of secondary school students. They deserve but, credit, don't but, they? But you see, the impression they create. Give them credit. I beg your pardon. Let me, listen to me. You won't give them credit. Listen, listen to me. The impression they create mm. that the totality of our national life revolves around just secondary school education. It's most unfortunate. It does. It does not. The look, look, look. Go and check this. Again, I like to look at the statistics. Mm. Oh, there, right. are, there are over 5 million Ghanaian students, as we speak. 5 million people, mm. young people in school, mm. from basic to tertiary. That's right. If you take out about 1.2 million, there's an outstanding... 3.8 million, mm. all of who pay fees. All of them pay fees. Some of the fees at the basic level <laughs> is much higher mm. than what people pay at SHS level. Right. So when you sit on national television, you create the impression that because you've paid the fees of senior high school students, you have resolved the totality of our national problems. It is most unfortunate and misleading. Again, let me come to the issue of but, imports. But, 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 but I'm give them credit. Oh, you get no, you, you see, you see, Johnny, have, Johnny, yes, you see, you have have our have national have. problems are many. They are vast. They are mm. legion. Mm. So you don't seek to address one of them and tout it as a be-all and end-all of national development. Mm. That is unfortunate. You see, they must show sensitivity to the average Ghanaian. After you have imposed all these taxes on the Ghanaian, which has dwindled his disposable income and make life harder for him, you don't tout one single uh, issue and make it seem that you've resolved every problem that he has. Now, let me come to the issue of taxes and imports. Finally. It is true that they announced some reduction right. in the benchmark revenue. But Precisely because they introduced the benchmark revenue and another one they call the cargo tracking notes. Right. It led to an astronomical increase in duty payments. Mm -hmm. You understand the point I'm making? So the duty payments that they came to meet in 2016 went up drastically. However, the reduction was not commensurate with the initial increase. 
It's like you were paying 100 Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. Then it went up to 150 Ghana cities. Okay. Then you reduce it by 20 Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. You are left with 130 Ghana cities, which is higher than the 100 Ghana cities that you came to meet. Okay. So that is what I meant I when I said that despite the reduction, it is okay. much higher. Indeed, as I've been sitting here, I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've received a message from an importer friend of mine mm -hmm. who insists that he is even paying more now than he used to, used to because the dollar against which import duties are benchmarked has gone up against the city. And so now you need more cities. So it's a question to be of able. forex. It's not a but question see, of the, the depreciation, a, a, the depreciation the upgrade of the fees again, and the ports. A, yes, it is a combination of factors. It is the introduction of new measures and policies there in, in addition to exchange rate depreciation. <laughs> now, the reason why exchange rate depreciation is important stems from Dr. Bamiya's own claims in opposition. When he did that infamous lecture at the Central University, he said that the most important indicator mm. of Good economic performance mm. was the exchange rate because okay. that is neutral. Thank you. So if th under th your if under your tenor, th thank you. Mm. If under your tenor, the, the exchange rate depreciates. You are to bear the blame for it. Finally, oh, on Sanwa, I, 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 I beg your pardon. You see again, John, again, John, again, John. again I'll, give, I'll give him equal time. No problem. I don't have a difficulty. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm fair and balanced. It's okay. Once you give him equal time, it's fine. I don't have a difficulty. Sanwa Hydro. You see, when you listen to this government and its assigns. You get the impression that they celebrate mediocrity. Look, oh how let the me money explain. is in. Let no, me explain. Oh, no. The, no money is in. What has happened is that the board of the so Sun Hydro or the entities in China who are supposed to work on that money have approved the first tranche for okay. four lots of routes. Four, four lots, just four, four routes. Mm. That's all. So it is an approval. The money has not hit any account. Secondly, they are even but unable to tell us. Is Johnny, Ipsa, that Johnny, the will you come. see, they are ask Kamal Adin how much money is coming. How much? He doesn't. He's not able to tell. Doctor Bamia mm -hmm. was not able to tell us two days ago at that function. But the point I was going to make is that in all, the first tranche of money that was approved by Parliament sometime last year, I believe, was about six hundred and eighty million Ghana uh, dollars. That was the first tranche of two billion dollars. But you see, all that two billion dollars. Even if they were to get it today, it would be a drop in the ocean compared to how much money we, I mean the NDC government, invested in infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. So sector by sector, Thank you see you. that they will not be able okay. to do anything. No, no, and, uh, and if you like, check Johnny. the budget. Mm. Check Johnny, the budget. Johnny, There's a section Johnny, where they speak Johnny, about roads. Johnny, okay. They promise an interchange at interchange at Allow him. Allow him. Allow him. Thank you. Johnny. Come on, step in for me. There let's start no, from. Let's start from the no, exchange no, rate. Thank you. Let's mm -hmm. start from the exchange rate and the ports issues. Okay. Then, then you I'll, I'll be coming there. Yeah. There is no celebration of mediocrity that you can compare, okay, or that is comparable to that of the NDC when they got photoshopped, whatever, books for us. Yeah, called the Green Book. You know that is false. Photoshop books for that, us. That is complete. That false. they call the Green Book. To tell you these are the projects we have yeah, but they have fired no, no, fire no, I'm saying that I'm uh, no some of the project that you please, said please, well, you went to launch I've been very but quiet you know, very quiet allow him to please, please, please. But, but, Johnny 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 we will respond let me move on Kabao. I'm saying there's Kabao. no celebration of mediocrity Kabao. comparable to that Kabao, hold now, on. No, Kabao, no, hold no, on for me this is our oh show. God. It's our show, yes. Okay. And, and I'm he, saying that he had time before well, to me. Well, but when he, he makes time, if he didn't makes, interject. Come on, come on, hold on. I interjected so many times. Okay. okay. And like there were questions go I ahead, asked. Go them. ahead, go ahead. I'm saying that some of those Photoshop photos that were spoken about, mm. the NDC has said that the president is going about launching some of them. How do you respond to that? I will tell you why there is. One. Let me continue okay. with Felix, that. Allow him, Felix, allow him, allow him, please. I am right. saying that he says that. Look, we, he gets an impression that we are celebrating mediocrity. The mere fact that there has been an approval and Sino Hydro, a bauxite meant for Ghanaians, is given to Ghanaians for infrastructure development, monumental one. Yeah. That one, he says, we are celebrating mediocrity. And I'm saying there's no mediocrity. Compared okay, to. comparable <laughs> to what they had shown. Okay, when they were in power, giving a Photoshop books called the Green Book, mm. and giving a Photoshop what? Manifesto. Let me prove to you. <laughs> Page 19 of their own manifesto prior to the 2016 <laughs> election, mm -hmm. they told us that they had built some hospitals in Mpoho, Wasa Mpoho. Their own region. manifesto, Western region. You look at it, they sat down, diligently worked on it, and came out and it was a lie. There was nothing on the ground. Their own manifesto, promising mm. Ghanaians. But that put that aside. Now they told us again that, look, if a government promises someone or the people of this country or a party promises makes a solemn promise that promise is supposed to be held mm -hmm. and that if you are not able to do it you should be punished for it or you should be actually you shouldn't be taken serious then they are not the alternative at all they told us that they're going to build 10 training colleges in all the 10 regions when we had 10 regions then show me one that you have built not one 
You told the whole world that you're going to build 200 schools. How many were you able to finish and you came up? Abysmal performance. Today we have come and we are helping you to complete some of this stuff. Now you tell that we have not done any job. Now let's move on. The man says, I have spoken about taxation. Right. And that he still maintains that even though there's reduction, but it is still lower, I mean, higher than what we used to pay when it was NDC. I mean, you have to call importers to find out that. Yeah. that we have said to, got there's a, a build-up. There's a build-up, of course, of, uh, that's to him and his works. Okay. okay? There's a build-up mm. as to how much importers pay. And of course, this build-up that we do have, if goods that attract the benchmark clearly, of course, will be affected positively by the reduction. If goods that import duty at the end of the day are affected by certain taxes that we have actually levies that we have taken out, of course, positively it is affected by it and it is going to reduce. But for me, he still maintains that look, there's a reduction. I mean, there's, there, there's a reduction though. However, it is still more than what the NDC exchange rate. I, I disagree exchange with rate. you. Now, the exchange rate. <coughs> I told you, I mentioned it earlier on before he even came in. Right. I said that look, take all the indicators, the elements that build up to the economy and point to a positive economy. But for the interest rate, I mean the exchange rate, mm. okay, everything looks good on the paper. Everything, he, of course, he has not come out to tell me otherwise. He hasn't told me that all the figures we have are wrong. I'm happy he's talking about government statistician, and then at the end of the day, their figures are correct. Go there and find out the figures of inflation. Find out the figures of our GDP, real GDP growth and all that. Mm. Find out where we are. You will realize that we have a resilient economy. Of course, on the uh, uh, foreign forex market, I said there are challenges. Me. I took to my Facebook wall some time ago and I said, look, what are we doing in that particular sector, the forex market? We've allowed the black market to strive. It is so, so healthy. Yet we have laws sitting in our books that talks about money laundering. We have laws sitting in our books that talk about regulating the sector. I am sure that going forward, Ghanaians, who are Ghanaian, we should look at this critically. The vice and, president and said he has, he has and arrested the dollar. And ask look, under them, and, and of course, of course, yes, given the key I am to saying, Mr. P2T. I have given you a factor, and I'm saying not until we are able to nip in the bag. Okay. This need to nefarious activities that we have in our financial sector in terms of the forex market. If we are able to ensure that the black market is clamped down, okay. we are able to ensure that laundering of our uh, hard currencies in this country mm. is stopped. Okay. If we are unable to do this, no government will come and not be able to. I mean, we will be able to solve this problem. Okay. But of course, so that's our problem. It is our attitude. Mm. It is the way we move with it that is what is causing it. Okay. At the end of the day, we need to put stringent measures in place to move on. Admission? Why we cannot have hundred percent? We are not God. We have certain places where we have had our lapses. It's clear. But of course, we are doing comparative analysis and bringing in the NDC. Mm. You will get to know and understand that indeed, at the end of the day. The NDC can never become the vice president. The said he had arrested no. the CD, the dollar, and given the key to, uh, to, the, to the, vice, the, the vice president. The vice the president, the vice president, the lecture which mm -hmm. he alludes to and says that it was uh, an infamous lecture. At that lecture, he asked them questions. One hundred and seventy. Well, up to date, the NDC has not answered it. When you ask but them, the, the they are unable to the answer. The person you put the question and, to and is, is oh, the man. Gone. Oh, sorry, sorry. Late, late, Bless his soul. Yes. But at least he could pass it on to their, their gurus <laughs> like Felix and Felix put answer it. I've, up to date, I've not seen it. But, but, I, but I, I've asked you a question <clears throat> about the arrest of the dollar kept in the cell and the key given to Mr. Santia Pietu, who was IGP at the time. You have not responded. It was, now, it, the the it, dollar it, keeps going up. It was then a statement of fact or not. The city had gone down then or didn't go down when he made the comment so the dollar no, has, i'm asking a question so the dollar has you are asking me a now. question of what the vice president said right. and i'm asking a simple question the then the statement he made was it a factual statement that the city had actually gained some value or not so i don't know a question but what i want to you find see, out from you, you see, what i want to find out from you is that why? has the dollar escaped jail now i'm sure you listened to me carefully when i spoke to you about the fact that look we have a challenge in the forex market right i i, I mentioned it so if we know and why we not fix it and now you are taking black, me back to a black comment black that the and i'm saying that that time he made that comment okay was it a factual statement or it was a wrong statement okay let's hear yeah. the uh, let's hear the let's no no I hope that I'll no, no let's here. let's hear the let messages me, no, you have both have, let, you have both yeah, have two there are no stands let's let's move to the no stand <laughs> there are no stand i want us to deal with it okay oh. yes crystal the, welcome back the no stands we need to deal with it that's no, we will. the friend noted we 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 yeah. all right hi johnny my name is bryce entry the <laughs> npp government has done really well 
the NDC people should stop talking and think about how to win the election 2020. From Wolanyo in Akwetia, NDC's propaganda at work again as the minority NDC preempted before the actual budget is read. The main idea is to demonize the whole budget statement and put fear and panic into the public domain. Ghanaians know the competency of Akufuadu uh, government, unlike a government which ran it to run to IMF for disgraceful bailouts and policy credibility. NPP is voted to deliver us from Mahama the, the Moa's mess. Okay, the sleeping incompetent president Akufuadu has failed and he will be si he will be kicked out. The Mahama government was better than this incompetent elephant-sized Ikufuado government. That's from Prince Dama in Dansuman. Mr. Host, can you help me answer the question, when an economy is growing, don't the indigents uh, experience or see the growth? Is it only the party or power as the expatriates and the expatriates who see it? That's from Peter. Good morning, Johnny. For economy... Uh, for economy, NPP is far, far better than NDC. The way IMF has done, uh, the, the way IMF has done to the youth that Felix is talking about, economy, a good economic, a good economic, a good economy is giving us free SHS, NAPCO, nursing allowance, no more doom so planting for food and jo food and jobs, recruitment uh, ongoing in every sector. In fact, this NPP government is confused for more than any government is more confused than any government I've ever seen in this country. The NAPCO initiative brought by them, the month finished. How about how many days today? Oh, pardon me, I need to get this right. Um, the NAPCO initiative brought by them, the month finished... Well, he means to say that they have worked, but they okay, have all got the to month, pay. Okay, right. Nobody received even 10 pesos. And they are now uh, directing people to go to online schools. When people attended schools for two, three, four, oh. and four years, practically oriented, it's you done. can't <laughs> employ them permanently. And let me it's also nice um, remind you that 2017 and 2018 batch of trainees, nurses, are waiting for you in 2020 if they are not posted. Good morning, TV3, and good morning to your Panelists, Mr. Kamau, what is your problem? Whenever NPP communicators are talking about PF and J, you always mention North North. Why? Don't you know other parts of the country too farm? Do not point fingers to North in the planting for food and jobs. We're not enjoying it. So NPP must stop the reference, this references you're making from uh, Shamsuddin inside Tamalim. Why is it that Kamau lies a lot? If I'm a NABCO beneficiary, there was nothing like training before we started the work. It was the same Kamau who said all NABCO beneficiaries start work last year. But the truth is that as at the time he was making the statement, I was not placed. Be a good Muslim and stop lying because, polit because of politics. Always check your facts before coming out. Kamal Dean must be living on a different planet. Ghanaians are suffering more than ever. Look at the state of our roads and the stench coming from Makola Market, Kweku in La Paz. Please tell, the, please tell the NDC man that NAPCO is rather increasing the burden of graduates. The month has ended and personnel are yet to be paid. Yet still, they are now to do an online compulsory course from India. Otherwise, they won't be paid. Can you imagine? They, they, should be given, they should give us a break, 2020. We will also give them a condition since they have shown us that way. That's from Jay in Nima. Good morning, Johnny and your panel. Ghanaians have been suffering under this NPP government. Kamal talks about NAPCO and what have you Ask any NAPCO trainee at the last time, uh, of the last time they were paid. Ghanaians have regretted voting for this kind of change. Nana, hashtag Nana out now. Please, Johnny, ask Kamal Dean if the free education can be found in our 1992 constitution. If yes, did his party help to draft the policy from Alaji Abdul Rashid Tamale Central? Good morning, Hughes. Um, Hughes. Good morning, Hughes. Please tell the NDC man that this uh, program is not for him to prove the level of their party, party's incompetency. Common manifesto NDC can't write. They could allow NPP to take the good citizens. They should allow NPP to take the good citizens in Ghana to the promised land. They should think of 2028. Alaji Bobby from Kumbungu says. Hi, Johnny. Politicians are funny. When it comes to the nice policies, na names, when it comes to nice policies, names MPP is first uh, example. Policies. Oh, 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 right, right, right. MPP first. Example, plenty for foods and jobs. 1D, 1F, 1V, 1D, 1 constituency, $1 million, etc. Which of them have they achieved? Come to Nadam, where trees planted cannot last a week under youth in afforestation. In the same district, a paramount chief who used to organize big festival yearly, festivals yearly cannot fund the festival this year. Please, NPP should come and fund this chief. NPP also told a lie that they have 
of employ 53,000 nurses. I loved uh, Enter Ken Ufori Atta's bag, Emma from Nabdam. When facts meet fiction, we are able to deduce the, uh, what the truth is. Thanks for the marvelous performance today. This NPP government is a disaster, and it will be a patriotic act for every Ghanaian to vote out this highly incapable and super incompetent government. From Hamza Sharif Mohammed in Wa Upper West region. Good morning to you and your panelists and your panel. Hmm. Felix, in your Felix, in your 2008 manifesto, you promised Ghanaians by reducing uh, fuel prices drastically, putting money into people's pockets, and arresting the killers of late Yana. You today sit to condemn MPP for not implementing their manifesto. You have just forgotten that no wonders. You have just forgotten like that. No wonders. No wonder you will remain in opposition by Karim uh, Bana in at Sabari. Kamar Dean. Um, should know that labor has become an issue in our farming system. So 70% of labor is now family labor, which does not attract any fee. So do you count it as labor? That figure is political to make the PFJ uh, scene successful. But those farmers were there before the program was charged, was changed from GFSP to PFJ. And nothing has changed in our farming systems. So NPP should come for a debate. I'm ready to debate Kama on this. Recent, this is a that's from a researcher on farm business. And our last one for today. Um, good morning, Johnny. For no, no, you have read that one already. Oh, this one? Yeah, it's come up already. So push, push it out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right. Good morning, New Day. Johnny, I, I get sad each time I hear some politicians speak. It's very clear that a lot of people in governments, I, in governments know nothing about leadership. All they do is speak to defend the integrity of their political parties, then chart a genuine course for the well-being of Ghanaians in general. That's from Nana Kofi in Tamale. All our comments for the morning. Grateful. Oh, but I think I think you finished. You you I didn't take the time from you. You no, and so okay. Let me, Johnny, no, no, let, let me let me quickly ask you. You made a specific. comment on this fuel prices. There's been, and I there's to, been a I lot of let, comment let, about NAPCO fuel prices. And, I wanted, mm -hmm. No, no, you I would, you get a chance to talk about. But NAPCO, let's mm -hmm. respond to it because yes. I saw about four or five times in yes. there. Mm -hmm. What's happening to them? Where is their body? Why? Well, first of all, no one has said that they are not going to be paid. They say they are being forced now, to do for, an online I'm saying, I'm saying in that, India. first of all, the initiative alone, okay, is laudable. To even acknowledge that then we used to have what we call unemployed graduate association under Felix and Co. Okay. And today, we have what we call NAPCO. That alone tells you that monumentally, this government is doing better. Where's, to even think of them. Pay? We have, first of all, gone through online selection, got them on their, their list, of course, at the end of the day, if you have not been paid by because of delays for one month or two, that's not mean that you are not going to be paid. You are surely going to be paid. And because in any case, even going to the job market, he knows that. Go to the job environment. People who are hired, okay, normally, sometimes go through probation. And I tell you, sometimes you accumulate what you have until it's given to you. However, this government is not doing that. We have paid some and we are on. We can have challenges along the way. But then it does not mean that you are not going to be paid. But we are better off. Okay, we are far better than people who didn't even have an idea let, of let, what to let, do. Let's talk about the fuel prices. Uh, you have yeah, increased yeah. fuel prices more than 20 I times. I agree. I agree. I agree. In 2015, if he recalls, <laughs> they did a regulation to who brought about it. I'm happy a text that reminded him of their 2008 manifesto. Okay. That how they were going to reduce fuel drastically. We've done this fuel business. MPP has done it. NDC has done it. We are okay. on. Okay. We did it until we got to 2015, where they all sat down and said, look, okay. okay. That's what we Thank, you. Thank you very much. Uh, and time is up. Sir, so, and as well, is and as down down by where we are today. I, I, today, I, I, we are blaming I need, sir, It's only fair. Sir, sir, is breathing down 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 down. It is only fair. Sir, will beat me. Yes. Two minutes. All right. You will be gone when he beats me. You see, you see, you see. You're going to give me two we minutes need to too. inject. No, 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 you've made your point. You see, we need to, you need to inject candor into public discourse. Okay. Any claim that there was anything Photoshop about the demo, it's, it's a palpable form. Oh, okay. Is it? Come out, please. Felix, Felix, Felix Ovozu Kwache is uh, one of the deputy minister that for uh, uh, communication. He's also the member of parliament <laughs> aspirant for Asebu Abura. Uh, uh, Abura, Asebu, Kwamankese constituency in the central region. Come out, Dean Abdullah is a deputy national communications director of the NPP. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Welcome.